32. So good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Poncho Guevara. I am um, uh, I am a member of the Reimagining Public Safety Community Advisory Committee, and I'm calling this uh, meeting to order at 6.32 p.m. Um, I am going to, let's see if I can make this work. All right. Okay. Hopefully people can be able to see. So Welcome. Um, call, calling this morning, meeting to order, and we're here to engage in a community-led process that we can, that we believe can lead to meaningful recommendations for reform and alternatives to policing in our community. So, um, para explicar a todos, um, hay traducción disponible en español para esta reunión. Nuestro esfuerzo um, uh, es hacer que esta reunión sea uh, accesible, accesible para, para todos. Si en algún momento durante la reunión tiene dificultades técnicas, y llama a la, la, Lori Valdez um, al 408-661-1804 para que podamos resolver esos problemas rápidamente. If you speak English, please select English as your interpretation option now. We are going to have the first item on the agenda. Um, lived experience testimony is going to be um, in Spanish this evening. So please um, uh, marque el globito allá um, abajo para, para traducción. Please hit the globe at the bottom for translation uh, or interpretation. So um, just to uh, uh, just to go over um, accessibility, um, if you have any other suggestions on how to make this meeting more accessible, please email Chris Logan at Christopher L at sacredheartcs.org. And before we move forward with uh, with the conversation, we're going to start. I want to start with a land acknowledgement. We respectfully acknowledge that we host this meeting on the lands of the Muekma Ohlone people, who have stewarded this land through the generations. We commit ourselves to partner with our indigenous sisters and brothers to celebrate and honor their legacy and our collective work for justice and in our care for these lands we benefit from today. Hey, Pancho. Sorry, I know you want to get through this meeting quickly, but um, I'm sure the interpreters would uh, appreciate you just slowing just a little bit so they can uh, interpret for our, our guests. And in order to actually get things moving, I'm going to, um, we're going to start out with our lived experience testimony. And Amanda Solms is going to be joining us, and um, and we're, we're proud to invite her. Amanda, um, uh, Tienes palabra. Oh, gracias. Buenas tardes. Eh, eh, pues yo quiero que sepan lo que sucedió con mi hijo. Um, mi hijo estaba pasando por un una depresión y llevaba, él llevaba como tres días que no quería salir ni nada hasta ese día que ya miré que no salió del cuarto. Entonces ya mi esposo se había ido a trabajar ese día en la mañana porque eso fue el día 9 de, de marzo del 2017. Entonces yo en vista de que él no salía del cuarto, yo le llamé a mi esposo y me dijo que, que, por qué, que lo dejara un rato tranquilo y que si no salía, pues que pidiera ayuda. Entonces yo lo que hice fue que ya en vista de que él no quería salir y lo vi como que alterado un poco, eh, me dijo mi esposo, llama a la policía. Eh, realmente mi hijo no quería que llamara a la policía porque él lo primero que me dijo, no llames a la policía. Entonces, de todo modo, yo llamé porque yo quería que me lo ayudara. Y llegaron dos policías. Y le tocaron la puerta del cuarto. Él no quiso salir porque no, él no estaba bien. Y le hablaron con él, pero por, por, por afuera, porque él nunca abrió la puerta. Entonces hablaban con él y él le contestaba que él no iba a salir del cuarto. Y uno de los policías, él se quedó sentado conmigo en la sala y él me dijo que él me entendía como madre la preocupación mía. Y que... Ellos iban a ir, pero que lo dejara tranquilo, que no lo molestara. Pero ellos se, se fueron y cuando yo escuché que algo sonaba en el cuarto, entonces yo volví y los llamé. Y ellos llegaron otra vez de regreso y le eh, hablaron con él y todo. Y él decía que no, que él no iba a salir del cuarto. Pasaron como unas, ¿qué? Como unas dos horas y ya yo miré que como que estaba un poco más alterado. Y yo volví y llamé a mi esposo y mi esposo dijo, llama a la policía. Lo que yo llamé a la policía por tercera vez y vino uno de ellos, me dijo que, 
que, eh, que lo dejara tranquilo, que yo no tenía por qué estar tocándole la puerta. Le dije, yo en ningún momento he, he tocado la puerta, simplemente que he escuchado ruido y me preocupa que él esté haciendo algo, eh, se, esté, se esté haciendo algo que de pronto va a, a, a hacer algo con su vida. Entonces me dijo que no, que lo dejara quieto. Total es que me dijeron, usted lo que tiene que estar es calmada, dejarlo quieto, no lo moleste hasta que él salga. Entonces yo me, me quedé todo el día prácticamente en la sala esperando a ver si él salía y nada que salía. En eso yo escuché que él como que empezó a tirar otra vez cosas en el cuarto y a, ser, a sellar más el cuarto. Y yo llamé a la policía otra vez y uno de ellos me dijo que, que lo dejara tranquilo. Cuando yo me di cuenta que él dice que lo dejaran tranquilo, esa fue cuando, cuando se regresó otra vez y la quinta vez fue que volví y llamé porque yo le dije que llegó mi esposo. Ah, no, la quinta vez fue que ya mi esposo llegó y trató de abrir la puerta para ver qué, está, qué era lo que estaba haciendo, qué sucedía. Entonces vino él, eh, él este trató como tenía como tenía un cuchillito nomás ahí en la en la mano, pero él en ningún momento le iba a hacer daño a nadie porque él lo quiso fue abrir, mi esposo trataba de abrir la puerta y él la cerraba. Entonces llegó la policía, trajeron trajeron policías con unos con unos escudos y todo esto, rodearon toda la toda la calle la rodearon y, y trajeron como 20 policías y eran como bueno, como 30, eran como 10 carros y todo. Total es que lo que la pregunta que ellos nos hicieron a nosotros es que si nosotros teníamos armas. Entonces le di, eh, mi esposo le dijo que sí, que él tenía unas armas. Una estaba en el cuarto de mi esposo que mi hijo nunca tocó esa arma porque él nunca tocó esa arma y la otra la tenía en el en el la tenía debajo de la de, debajo de la cama, entonces ellos no nos dijeron que le entregáramos esas armas, se las entregamos y se quedó el policía con las armas puestas en la en la cajuela del carro, dejó las armas ahí puestas. Entonces, cuando él está afuera con las armas y todo, porque ya toda la policía supuestamente ya ellos no tenían más nada que hacer, que ellos ya se tenían que ir. Y el policía que agarró las armas no se las regresó a mi esposo ese día. Él se las llevó con él. Total es que a, como que ya él recordó que se había eh, llevado las, la, las armas y se regresó. Cuando él se regresó, mi hijo estaba estaba gritando que él se iba a herir, que él no sé qué, que él iba a hacer algo. Yo era lo que entonces yo salí corriendo, llorando y le pedí ayuda al policía. Le dije que mi hijo se iba a hacer daño, que por favor me ayudara. Y el policía lo que me dijo a mí fue: ya todo terminó, ya no vamos a hacer nada. Y le, le dije, pero por favor, él me dice que se va a hacer daño, por favor, ayúdenme. No, 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 ya ya todo terminó, todo se acabó. Entonces, él se fue, el policía se fue. Al momento que el policía se fue, mi hijo salió por la ventana. Pero él por la cuando él salió por la ventana, yo lo vi que él tenía sangre en, en la mano. Él se había cortado un poquito en la mano. Y yo alcancé el teléfono y le llamé, por favor, ayúdenme, que mi hijo se, se fue. Y, y, y llegó el, el policía que lo asesinó, llegó y me preguntó, ¿por dónde se fue él? Yo no me acuerdo de él. Y le, le dije, yo se fue por este camino. Y nos quedamos aquí en la casa, mi esposo y yo, y como a los... no pasaron... 15 minutos cuando llegó un policía alto no le miré la no le miré el nombre ni nada pero se puso en la puerta como sellando la puerta para que nosotros no entráramos pero en ningún momento nos dieron que ellos habían acabado con la vida de mí y como a las dos o tres horas eh, no como a las sí como a la una una hora y media por ahí 
llegó uno de los sargentos y mi esposo le dijo, ¿qué es lo que está pasando? ¿Qué pasó con Jesús? Y lo, lo, que me, lo único que digo es que lo sentía mucho, pero que ya esos de ellos lo habían matado. Un niño que él no nunca fue, o sea, todo lo contrario de lo que dijo el Señor que lo mató, porque todo lo que él dijo fue en contra. Porque él dijo en la corte que él, no, no, que él había, había, había accedido a hacer eso porque Jesús como que presentaba un peligro para, para, la, para la, las personas que pasaban por ahí pero era un lugar donde nadie pasaba porque es por donde pasa el tren. Ese no era, ese no es un lugar transitable, o sea, que él, él por qué lo tuvo que hacer cuando Jesús, él, él había una barrera que, 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 que él tuviera, ellos tuvieron que usar escal, escaleras para poder cruzar a donde estaba Jesús. Pero con todo lo que él dijo fue contrario a todo lo que a, a todo lo que sucedió porque ellos todo ellos no ellos no han debido de acceder porque él necesitaba ayuda era un muchacho que tenía problemas de depresión no para que hubieran acabado de, con la vida de él como lo hicieron entonces yo pienso que todo el sistema debe de cambiar aparte de todo después que acaban con la vida del ser querido lo obligan a uno, porque eso se llama obligar a llevarlo a la estación de policía que declare en ese momento a quién, o sea, con el dolor que se tiene, como lo llevan de una vez a declarar cuando acabaron con su, lo más querido que usted tiene. Y lo que dice, lo que decían ellos es que como que ellos me dieron una indemnización a mí porque por lo por la vida de Jesús, usted no va a regalar nada, si usted paga es porque usted rompió la losa, ¿no? No porque usted me por porque usted quiera dar. Porque todas las pruebas que yo conseguí, conseguí porque digo yo que las conseguí porque con el dolor del alma con todo yo salí a averiguar a todos los vecinos y gracias a las pruebas que los vecinos me dieron, con eso pude ganar el caso. Porque todo lo que ellos dijeron fue todo lo contrario de lo sucedido. Entonces yo pienso que ya es momento de que pongan un par a todo esto, porque están acabando con familias. Ya son personas que no salen a ayudar a la comunidad. Salen a acabar con las personas. Porque ya uno no sabe si... Yo, yo en, mí, en mí, yo nunca llamaría a la policía por ayuda. Prefiero enfrentarme, como se los dije a ellos. Prefiero enfrent, enfrentarme con el agresor. o en, Prefiero enfrentarme con la persona que se meta a mi casa que llamarlo a ustedes, porque llamarlo a ustedes es como ponerse la sentencia de muerte. Gracias, Amanda. Thank you, Amanda, for your testimony. Um, I want to um, thank you for your courage and being able to share your story and your pain. Um, I'm going to move thank to, you. I want to move to public comment. Um, any, uh, uh, if there are any members of the public that would like to address the committee in response to the lived experience testimony that we heard, please raise your hand. I see Sandra's hand is up. Sandra, you have the floor. Thank you. I just wanted to thank our guest for her courage in coming tonight and sharing her story. What happened to her son is the exact same fear that I had for my son when he was experiencing a mental health crisis. So I can personally identify with this story and I thank her for her courage and I'm so sorry for her loss. Rob. 
I said, I'm, I'm sorry for your loss. Um, I'm sorry that uh, we weren't able to help uh, your son access the resources he needed in his time of need. Um, and I think your story speaks to uh, our need to in invest more in alternative responses, because as you said, the police aren't trained to respond to these kind of situations. Um, there were many, I, I heard of many opportunities uh, where your son could have been connected to help before he, um, you know, even chose to, or, or, or or was of the disposition to, you know, hold a knife or, or be that unstable. I heard a lot of chances to be connected to services beforehand. Um, and I think, you know, this, this committee has a chance to put forth some recommendations that help um, ensure that the, that the city um, kind of, as this, that the city promises to uh, take part in that action to expand that system of 988. Thank you, Rob. Chad? Yeah, I mean, first of all, thank you so much for your courage to share, as Boncho and others have said. Um, and I also agree with Rob. I think this is just like a great illustration of why some of the recommendations that we're going to talk about or hopefully approve forward tonight are so critical. I also can't help but think that while I'm so privileged and honored to be able to hear this story, I almost feel like it's like it needs to be heard by so many other people, right? So many others who uh, need to feel your pain and experience. Um, so thank you, but also like, how can we, how can we share these experiences and these stories with people who don't always get to hear them and really need to hear them? So thanks. Thank you, Chad. Thank you, Amanda. And thank you for members of the committee for sharing your reflections. All right, I'm gonna move on to item four on our agenda, which is uh, which is the first of a series of, of conversations and hopefully uh, voting on recommendations this evening um, for, uh, you know, for the work of this um, committee. So welcome to the, the two-part finale, um, gripping two-part finale of the Reimagining Public Safety Community Advisory Committee. We're gonna dive right into a conversation about the final proposals. And I'm gonna go through a quick um, summary of the recommendations of our proposals in uh, I think seven different groups. And so to begin, um, uh, what, you, what you're gonna be seeing in front of you, hopefully we'll be able to share this slide deck and another um, uh, and a little PDF that includes these summaries. This is a summary of the core recommendations that are in the 44 different proposals. So, uh, so here are the groupings and it's in the agenda today. We're gonna be alternative safety response recommendations. Um, we're gonna be uh, support for impacted families recommendations. We're gonna have um, improved community conditions recommendations. Uh, civilian oversight and accountability recommendations, um, police conduct recommendations, uh, hiring personnel and training recommendations, and then um, last two are enforcement priorities recommendations and recommendations to other bodies. So we're going to be going through each of them in groups and then considering them each in groups, but I'll be doing kind of a quick summary of this and what, what you have, where you can have in front of you today are really a distillation of the um, of the six months of work, of um, hundreds of hours of, of research and time that's been put in by so many of you to help develop these, and just being able to still what are some of the core recommendations that are contained within those documents that not only make uh, summary recommendations, but also have background and justification, sometimes process recommendations, budget, and other types of things. And so, um, so our goal today is to have um, approval of, of a set of, rec of these recommendations in these groups so that we will be able to uh, move forward with drafting of a final report. So to begin with, um, the first one, um, this is contained in, um, in proposal AS2, the city of San Jose will invest in mobile response teams that can respond to incidents involving individuals experiencing mental health crisis. 
These teams will consist of service providers from community-based organizations rather than law enforcement to de-escalate crisis situations and provide connections to resources and support. Locally, the County of Santa Clara has developed a pilot program known as Trust and the city should expand um, this program capacity citywide. Um, second in this group, um, the city council should develop a plan to implement the national 988 behavioral health a behavioral crisis response system for the purpose of identifying and diverting 911 calls to appropriate response systems. Homelessness response. Uh, two proposals to be highlighted in, the, in this particular category. The City of San Jose will invest in mobile response teams that can respond to calls for assistance for the unhoused. Multidisciplinary teams of professionals can offer solutions to address their needs in a crisis from mental health, behavioral health, medical attention, social services, peer support, and more as needed. And, um, and part of AS4, the city of San Jose will provide encampment maintenance services, distribution of basic necessities, and connection to case management services and problem solving support funded by the city and county of Santa Clara. Traffic safety, there are um, about five proposals in this uh, under this category. Um, uh, number five, um, and it's part of PP2, um, the city of San Jose will uh, expand the Department of Transportation Traffic Safety role to effectively manage street safety with a focus on high injury corridors outlined in the Vision Zero plan through street design, traffic calming measures, and increased community engagement, thereby reducing speeding um, and reckless driving and the need for enforcement in the first place. Um, Number six, two subpoints. The city of San Jose, uh, San Jose will develop a strategy to move traffic and parking enforcement personnel and responsibilities into the Department of Transportation Traffic Safety Division to the extent allowable by law. The city of San Jose will pass a resolution to encourage state legislators to give municipalities flexibility in developing alternative traffic enforcement strategies. And um, also part of the same proposal, the city of San Jose will transition community event permitting and safety coordination to another city department. Um, Number seven, the city of San Jose will focus on, uh, will focus SJPD traffic enforcement efforts on extremely high risk violations, such as reckless driving and extreme speeding. Um, SJPD will eliminate pretextual uh, traffic stops in San Jose, ensuring that SJPD officers have specific crime related justifications for stopping someone if their intent is to investigate a crime. Number eight, the city of San Jose will develop, um, will, will develop with community stakeholders a surveillance ordinance um, to ensure privacy and civil rights protections can guide policymaking for future uh, potential adoption of automated speed enforcement measures. Those are the ones under traffic safety. Two more in the, uh, three more in this section, gender-based violence. The city of San Jose will develop alternative community-based response programs for gender-based violence that provide an alternative to law enforcement involvement. Programs may involve community teams designed to safely intervene in incidents of domestic violence and survivor-led restorative practices for low-level gender-based violent crimes. We Keep Us Safe campaign. Um, this is part of a proposal PP8. I'm sorry, and the one before that was AS3. So uh, PP8, the City of San Jose will develop a program to educate and train the public, community, and neighborhood organizations on how to de-escalate crisis situations, support neighbors in distress, utilize alternative responses, and reduce reliance on police response. And last but not least in this section, community service officer. The city of San Jose, this is part of this AS5, the city of San Jose will expand the capacity of the community service officer program, which responds to lower level calls for service, such as non-criminal calls, non-violent crimes, and other investigations. The city will analyze calls for service to determine CSOs can respond to additional, um, additional calls and develop protocols for call diversion to CSOs wherever possible. So here's the process I'm going to suggest for this evening. Um, I'm going to, I would like to entertain a motion for adoption of these proposals, um, one through 11 um, on, on, this, uh, on this list right now, this evening, that include um, uh, AS2, AS1, PP5, AS4, PP2, um, AS3, PP8, and AS5. Um, like to entertain that motion if someone could move that. I second it. Well, who's the first? Sorry. Ihoma. This is Ihoma. Okay. 
Okay, Uhoma, it, it moves. Um, can I get a second? I'll second. Thank you, Gabrielle. So now we're on discussion on the motion, <clears throat> and the motion is to is to adopt the following elements to be part of our final report. Tarab, you have the floor. Sorry, um, I have one that's a little bit more about a specific recommendation. Uh, it's about the wording for the 9881. Mm -hmm. um, if we, we can send it in as asking the city to develop it because they won't vote on it because the county develops it. Mm -hmm. um, what that recommendation is really asking is the city to, to take part in that process with the county. So it would, it's like a word like collaborate in the development uh, would make sure that we don't get hit with that procedural thing. But apart from that, uh, I'm all for you know, accepting these. I, I like the, the way they've been organized, like categories. Okay, great. So, um, so uh, the recommendation that says should develop a plan to collaborate in the uh, in the to collaborate in the implementation. Yeah. Um, Ahoma, do, would you accept that as a friendly amendment? Yes, that is. I accept that as a friendly amendment. Great. <laughs> it was a good catch. It, it is a very good catch. Thank you. <laughs> Any other conversation? All right, seeing none, I'm gonna to go to public comment. Um, so for members of the committee and we can still jump back and forth on this, but um, any members of the public that would like to, oh, Kiana, go ahead. I'm sorry, I raised my hand um, a little late. I wanted to say that Chad and I have been collaborating on combining the two unhoused uh, mm -hmm. encampment related recommendations. So the, that will change. Um, we're still working on the the language so we don't have like a final draft yet but it it's more or less the same but the language is changing and they are being combined so is there any substantive changes to the content of either um I, either the the mobile response team or the encampment maintenance is there anything substantive to that there there are some changes uh chad do you want to answer this I think that the the main changes I would summarize are one, you know, as Kiana said, we're combining. Mm -hmm. Two, we're we're having a little more bent towards the kind of coordination of all of the efforts that are kind of bubbling up across the city and the county because there's a couple of things that are already in motion that haven't technically started yet or have started recently that we want to make sure to recognize, but that they need to be coordinated and kind of have like a backbone and then kind of a shared accountability structure that will include, you know, lots of transparency and community participation and shared kind of understanding of what success might look like for these street mobile crisis units. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think the last thing is like, we want to very specifically coordinate, you know, kind of like along the lines of what Tarab said, like with the county, especially behavioral health in that in order to, for these interventions, kind of crisis interventions to be successful, we'll need kind of a new level of coordination and access to county, county behavioral health services in order to make sure that like, in the moment of crisis, an unhoused individual can be connected to crisis and higher level care um, that right now isn't prioritized for unhoused. So uh, we are very close to a final draft of the combined, uh, but those I would say are like the main shifts or additions. And can I just add that we were just planning on combining them, but keeping them uh, more or less how it, they're, they're currently written. Mm -hmm. um, but the city of San Jose, the housing department, they produced a recommendation that was very similar to what we were putting out. And so with that new information, we decided that that maybe we should we should pivot a little bit. Otherwise, of course, the council um, would say, oh, this is already happening. So that's the reason why uh, it's kind of we're, we're adjusting. 
So I just want to get one clarification before Sandra, you jump in. Um, it is the like uh, one thing is, for example, it's you were mentioning that it's about more about coordination and and the collaboration, the shared accountability structures, you know, for you know for the for the proposal that you'd be looking at changing. Is there anything substantively that we want to change about either of these? Is the coordination of the encampment work, or is it the is it more about the PP five? Chad, thoughts? I mean, I think the priority is PP5 because, and we talked about this a lot because like, because this whole committee is focused on, you know, law enforcement and alternatives to law enforcement and kind of shifting funding away from traditional responses like that. We want that to make sure that that's like the priority, but we do feel like there is like a need for coordination of all services encampment services and kind of outreach supportive services so like we would i think the recommendation is to use that same infrastructure like if we're going to coordinate all the crisis response teams we might as well use that same infrastructure to, to coordinate all encampment kind of supportive services um so i hope that answers but like i think it's like we started going down the path and kiana please like uh chime in if i'm saying anything that you disagree with or is different but we definitely want to include all the supportive services, but because of the nature of this particular committee and not wanting to get too far away from like the task at hand of like, how do we respond differently to situations where right now the police are the primary response? We wanted to make sure that that was like the highlight. Cool. Is, are there any recommended change? Obviously, you're going to be making some additional kind of nuances and changes. Is there anything in just the summary that you think is off that needs to be altered at this point? It sounds like you're adding more depth in terms of the implementation, who's in charge, how decisions are getting made, those kinds of things. But in terms of the substance of the recommendations, does any of this language need to be altered? I think the substance is more or less the same, but like you mentioned, Pancho, we're just adding more depth and we're really doing um, the connecting the dots work of it all. Um, Chad, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I agree. I think that the way you characterized it, Poncho, is good. And 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 just kind of like trying to, we spent, we've been working on it for a while now, so it, it's like we forget, but we are like literally just trying to combine two proposals here too, to make it stronger and make it uh, hopefully stronger if it goes to council, right? Like, and not confuse people or dilute it was really our goal. Perfect. So yeah, so no substantive changes, I don't think necessary from this summary, but like the main goal is to like that this summary will become one. Perfect. No, thank you, Chad. Sandra, thank you for your patience. Sorry, sorry Sandra. No worries. I'm glad we're having some good discussions tonight. Um, Poncho, I wanted to review the traffic safety um, summaries because Darcy and I met yesterday and made some changes to our combined recommendation. And I just want to make sure it accurately reflects the, the intent of the changes we made. Um, yeah, so for this summary, I think one of the things that we really felt, um, we kind of, kind of changed the tone of that wording a little bit. Um, and what we wrote yesterday was invest much more in self-enforcing streets and streets and traffic infrastructure through an equity lens in a way that established traffic enforcement and traffic surveillance as a means to eliminate and prevent traffic hotspots rather than a tool for criminalization through identification of root causes. Okay. Um, so focused a little bit less on the um, on the what and more on the how. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that something that uh, can can this substantively reflect like the the process of, of of the what and then the how can be fleshed out in the if, like as you've done in the amended proposal? Um, is there anything off about that? I know there's a different area of emphasis, but in right. terms of, are you talking, are you saying that it wouldn't be the Department of Transportation that would be working on the traffic safety calming Vision Zero plan work? 
no, it'll definitely still be the Department of Transportation. Yeah. Um, orders. Um, this was lifted right from your, yeah. <laughs> from your previous. <laughs> yeah. Was it from the one we wrote yet updated yesterday? Or no, no, it's from, it was from it was from the one from before. So yeah, which is why I'm kind of looking because that um, we really changed quite a bit yesterday. Um, I don't even think we have that specific paragraph in there anymore. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think. So yeah, I, th I think it, the what is still, yeah, I think it, I think it's okay. Um, I guess I would prefer there to be something in the statement that focuses that it's going to be um, an equity lens and not just the high injury corridors, mm -hmm. but okay. that we're, we're doing it. The focus is on making sure we don't identify only high injury corridors in low income parts of the city, for example, right? So we wanna make sure there's that equity lens in everything that we do. Should I take up the language around vision zero plan? Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, I, I think I like that better. Can you live with that? I can live with that. Um, Ahoma, would I, you accept that? Yes, I am, I am, I, approve the amendment to the language. <laughs> Great. Thank okay, you. Darcy, you are here. I wasn't sure if you were going to be here. Please just jump in if I'm, uh, if you have something to add. And then there was another, there was a couple more, right, for traffic. Um, yep, I think that one looks good. And then, um, I think that one's okay. Um, Darcy, are you okay with that? Or do you think there's anything Um, I, I think they're okay. Um, based on the conversations, the research meetings we continue to have with folks and the conversation we have with Berkeley, it seemed like it may have been important that if the city is going to use surveillance anyway, that we make sure that there's a policy that tries to minimize harm and um, gets the city to really think about surveillance in a way that protects civil rights and um, yeah, it doesn't cause that kind of harm. And then the, the top one, yeah, that, that looks looks like some of the things that are written in our proposal. The, the most current proposal that we updated based on all the community feedback and the research meetings that we had has, has been uploaded to master spreadsheet. So the question again, can we live with this? <laughs> Any other? I think, I think as long as those tra those traffic summaries allow us to, to keep the focus on like the self-enforcing streets and the idea behind street design being the primary force of our primary means of traffic enforcement, then those are, because that's what's really um, front and center in our proposal, then yes, I could definitely look at those. Thank you. Any other, any other responses from committee members before I go to members of the public. All right, if there are any members of the public that would like to respond to the proposals on the floor, or the, the yeah, so the motion on the floor is for consideration of these 10 proposals. All right, seeing none, see if someone would like to call the question on the motion. This is Sandra. I call called a question. All right. So Chris, walk us through how we're going to vote on this. Um, I'll just roll call for 
roll call for each of these votes? Yeah, I'll do the roll call. Uh, Lavera Foster. Okay, we'll come back to him. Yes. Dor mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yes. Uh, Dorothy Wang. Come back to Dorothy Tarab. Yes. Gabriela Antolovich. Yes. Chad. Yes. Kiana Simmons. Yes. Darcy Green. Yes. Ihoma Gomez Ergonini. Yes. Pastor Sammy Evans. Yes. Sandra Asher. Yes. Tamara Hall. Yes. Pancho Guevara. Aye. Rosie Chavez. Yes. Lori Valdez. Yes. All right. Um, have 14 yeses, the motion passes. Thank you, Chris. All right. We did it. Now only 140 more to go. Just only slightly joking. All right. Woo! Yes. All right. So action item support, uh, item five, support for impacted families recommendations. So there are four proposals in this particular category. I will read them, um, try to read them not too fast for our interpretation. And, uh, and so for the and then, and then we'll. I will ask for a motion to um, uh, to a motion to be put on the floor for consideration of these proposals. So the first one is trauma relief fund. Um, this is uh, PP twelve. The city of San Jose shall establish a trauma relief fund for wraparound mental health treatment and social support services for survivors of violence. The fund should be detached from the criminal justice system and should be developed with input from survivors uh, from survivors of violence. Guaranteed basic income survivors of gender-based violence. The city of San Jose will establish a pilot program to um, provide financial assistance to survivors of domestic violence and other forms of gender-based violence to support them on their path to safety and self-sufficiency. Reparations pilot, system impacted families. The city of San Jose will develop a program providing reparations in the form of basic income targeting women of color who have been impacted by the incarceration of a loved one. And and last in this group, um, this is PP9. Um, the city of San Jose and other agencies will develop housing and supportive services to ensure individuals leaving jail and prison are not released into homelessness. So I'd like to entertain a motion um, to consider um, uh, items PP12, PP1, PP7, and PP9. I, I move to... Uh, yeah, I move to. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I I move that we pass the the four um, motions under under one uh, section. Thank you, Tarab. Um, Chad, did I hear you say second? Yes. All right. Thank you. All right. Now it is up for discussion for members of the committee. So, Tarab, you have your hand raised. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion on the item? Seeing none, I'm going to go to members of the public for public comment. Any members of the public would like to comment on these particular proposals under consideration by the Reimagining Public Safety Community Advisory Committee? All right, seeing none, I would like to, oh, Lori. Yeah, I just had a question on the, um, where it says um, tr um, relief, wait, trauma relief fund for system impacted families. Um, should it be all system impacted families? Should it include, because, um, you know, there is a system where they give victims of violence stuff, but families impacted by police violence are never included. So we have to make sure that families that are impacted by police violence are not left out of that, because that seems to be the, the big problem with, you know, any kind of funds that are done. The, the families of police violence are always left out of it. And it's a, you know, the a trauma relief fund for, you know, mental health, social support 
of survivors of violence, but they won't consider families of police violence as survivors of violence. They don't, they haven't done it thus far. They're not going to do it unless we make sure that it is put in there, that this includes community violence, police violence, you know, whatever kind of violence, domestic violence and stuff like that. That's all I have to say. Darcy? Hi. Um, yeah, it's, it's not listed here in the summary. Darcy, Darcy, you're kind of breaking up. Um, survivors of police violence is front and center in the actual longer policy. And so, oh, I'm sorry. Is, is that any? A little bit better. Okay, I'm sorry, in this car. Um, so survivors of police violence are, are specifically called out in the longer policy. So it's, this is a, a proposal that's really specific for victims of violence who have not been able to access traditional um, avenues and routes for victim services or survivor services. So we wrote this, um, Lori, with, with you all in mind. Um, and so it's maybe we could reflect that in this summary, but it's in, in the longer summary on the spreadsheet, it's we specifically call out this is for for in addition to being for other survivors of violence as well but specifically for victims of police violence yeah i think that needs to be included in the summary in order not because if not it'll be overlooked in the summary guaranteed i mean in the actual you know um item that they you know bring it for if it's not in the summary and so they know this is about you know also police violence victims it needs to be included in that the summary part Lori, Darcy, can you live with that change? I will defer to Lori. Um, yes, I'm good with that. Rosie? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm good with it. All right. So, um, with the maker of the motion, Tarab, would you accept that as a friendly amendment? I do. Move to any members of the public that may want to respond to any of the conversation about these proposals under support for impacted families. Seeing none, I'm going to ask for a member of the committee to call to question this, um, these, uh, the motion on the floor. Call the question. Thank you, Darcy. All right, uh, we're going to move to a vote. All in favor of um, of the motion on the floor to accept the four proposals for um, as amended support for impacted families recommendations. Um, roll call vote. Lavera Foster? Yes. Dorothy Wang? Yes. Turab, I'm sorry. Yes. Gabriel Antolovich? Yes. Chad Bohorikas? Yes. Kiana Simmons? Yes. Yes, did you hear me? Yep, I got it, thank you. Okay. Uh, Dicey Green? I think I heard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we got we got the yes. Uh, Ihoma. Yes. Pastor Sammy Evans. Yes. Yes. Sandra Asher. Yes. Tamara Hall. Yes. Pancho Guevara. Aye. Rosie Chavez. Yes. Lori Vadas. Yes. All right. Uh, I misspoke earlier. It was, it was uh, oh, yeah. So, sorry. 14, 14 yays, and the motion passes. All right. Moving right along. 
All right. Um, item six, action item, improve community conditions recommendations. So we have four recommendations here, and I will try to read them and not too quickly. Affordable housing, the city of San Jose will advance policies and funding that stabilize renters, preserve and increase the supply of affordable housing, such as rental subsidies and income supports. Um, the Community Opportunity to Purchase Act, Commercial Linkage Fee Program, and SB9 implementation. So um, next two items are living wage and, and wage theft. Um, these are both part of PP3 and PP10. The City of San Jose will increase the minimum wage alignment with the levels of um, with uh, with the levels of nearby municipalities and strengthen capacity for enforcement. I'm sorry, this is not PP3. That's PP10. Um, the city of San Jose will strengthen efforts to fight wage theft by revoking permits, contracts, licenses, and other city agreements with businesses with unpaid wage theft um, judgments, such as through a responsible contracting ordinance. Item PP4, under resources, the city of San Jose will place on the ballot an initiative to modernize the business tax by levying a tax on the income of large businesses in San Jose rather than on individual employees. Proceeds from the tax would be used to support initiatives to make vulnerable communities safer. And campaign zero, um, the city of San Jose will initiate a visioning process to identify strategies to ensure our communities are safer by addressing root causes of inequities, violence, and trauma, including benchmarks of success driven by community voices. So I'd like to entertain a motion um, for consideration of the proposals um, under the community conditions recommendations. I move that we accept and um, move forward all proposals that were just mentioned under the improved community conditions section. Thank you, Darcy. Is the motion, is there a second? I second. Thank you, Gabrielle. All right, we are on conversation on the motion to accept these recommendations. Any conversation? Seeing none, I'm going to open it up for to for public comment. Any members of, of the public that would like to um, respond to the items on for consideration? Sandra. Hi, sorry. Just um, looking through some of the verbiage again and. Um, for the one where we want the ordinance. Um, Responsible contracting ordinance. Yeah. Um, instead of such as, I think we should put including. I think that's cleaner and more direct. Okay. All right, is the, Tercy is the maker of the motion, would you? Yes. Accept mm -hmm. that, okay. the thank you. All right. Seeing no further members of the public or members of the committee raising their hands, I'd like to ask for a call to question. This is Sandra, I call to question. Thank you, Sandra. All right, we move to roll call vote. Chris, take it, take us away. Rivera Foster. Yes. Dorothy Huang. Yes. Robin Sari. Yes. Gabriel Antolovich. Yes. Chad Bohorquez. Yes. Kiana Simmons. Yes. Thank you, Darcy Green. Darcy, are you there? <laughs> May come in slowly. Um, come back to Darcy. Ahoma? Yes. Pastor Sammy Evans? Yes. Sandra Asher? Yes. Tamara Hall? Yes. Pancho Guevara? Aye. Rosie Chavez? Yes. Lori Valdez? Yes. 
All right. With 13, yes, there's the most in the passes. Um, I don't know if Darcy wanted to we should try again, but we have, we have 13 enough to pass. All right. Thank you. We move on to the next section of this, which is action item uh, seven, civilian oversight and accountability recommendations. So we have several proposals here, and I will try to read these as clearly as I can. Um, uh, number 21, this is ACC1, part of ACC1 of ACC10, the San Jose City Council will place on the ballot an initiative to establish an independent office of investigation external to the police department charged with fully investigating incidents of police misconduct and police shootings. Number 22, ACC10, the San Jose City Council will place on the ballot an initiative to establish a public safety oversight commission to oversee policing policies, practices, training, and investigations of police misconduct. And item 23, ACC 10, the San Jose City Council will place on the ballot an initiative to establish the Office of Inspector General to review policing systems, patterns, practices, policies, and training. Under transparency. Four, the city of San Jose will end binding arbitration in the, in the disciplinary and termination process for police officers. Uh, also part of ACC2, as the city works to end binding arbitration through negotiation and state legislation, the city will improve the disciplinary and termination process by making decisions by an arbitrator free and open to the public, improve the arbitrator selection process, limit the scope of the arbitrator's review, and allow the city the right to appeal to a state court. Still under transparency, the city of San Jose will fully implement SB 1421 and prioritize, rele prioritize release of disciplinary records of all officers involved in critical use of force incidents. It's ACC 6. Um, ACC 15, the city of San Jose will, will change the SJPD body worn camera policy to, re uh, to reverse the criminal preponderance of guilt, considering guilty, uh, consi consider, consider guilty until proven innocent any officers found failing to properly turn on a uh, body-worn camera resulting in a critical incident. Typo there. Um, ACC 17, the city of San Jose will modernize information technology, data collection, and reporting practices. SJPD will prioritize data management practices and staffing infrastructure to ensure ongoing public access to data on calls for service, use of force incidents, and misconduct complaints. And actually, this is not affordable housing. Sorry about that. Um, uh, yep, so I think that is it for that section. All right, 20, yep. All right, those are the oversight and accountability recommendations. I would like to entertain a motion for consideration of the oversight and accountability recommendations item seven. I put forward the motion to submit the recommendations as stated. Thank you, Homo. Is there a second? Can I, this is Sandra, can I second, but then also ask for a change? <laughs> you could always ask for a change. But okay. can, and in fact, yeah, so. I second, um, and then I would also like to go back to the first three on the ballot measures. Mm -hmm. um, I think if we want them to be in on the ballot this November, that we should state that in the recommendation. Unfortunately, it does not look like we can actually do, right? we, can, we cannot actually, based on our understanding of the timeframe of it, it cannot be placed on the ballot in November. Ah. Okay. So when was the this, next this November? It could it could be at a future election, you know, date, but um, but it's our recommendation to put them on the ballot. Okay. Could we put um, at the uh, something about like the soonest feasible? Um, my concern is that they might um, approve it, but then never actually go through with it because oh, we didn't have the timing, right? There's I don't want there to be uh, an excuse. So if we could just put the next uh, possible available date or something like that, so that we have kind of a, a time bound. 
we could potentially as a uh, I think that this was placed on like ACC 10, which covers these was actually placed on there by the steering committee. And this was largely supporting the charter review commission's recommendations on this, which will be considered by the city council in a few, like in a few months. So this is largely endorsing these particular proposals. Um, what I know of that Sandra is that partly we would want to be able to look at what the appropriate timing is so just saying the, the next available or the first available may not be the best timing for an election um, so there, there'd want to be testing and polling and other things to be see like when when you know what kind of language and other types of things that we, we would want to be able to advance so um I, I i would have the preference of keeping the language as is which is you know fairly loose we're just we're recommending that this move forward not getting into the specifics of to the council when it should move forward because if they decide to put it on on, on an election cycle that may be unfavorable that that would uh they, they would potentially lose so gotcha point well taken thank you i withdraw my request any discussion from members of the committee on the motion on the floor Seeing none. Oh, Chad, thank you. Sorry, just to confirm, it's okay to make comment. Of course. Um, I just wanted to applaud, you know, I don't have any contribution of this section, but I want to applaud the folks who do because I feel, at least in my mind, this is the most direct, impactful way to respond um, to police reform uh, or to George Floyd, et cetera. So, um, Sorry, I got my kids yelling in the background. I really called this it's distracting me, but I basically just wanted to say kudos to the folks who worked on this. Um, and I think that the, a lot of, especially some kind of like independent oversight committee is so needed in our community. So thank you for proposing it. And I hope that uh, our community listens. Thank you, Chad. All right, any members of the committee or the public that would perhaps like to comment? On, on these proposals. Kiana, I saw you unmuted. All right, seeing, seeing none, I'm gonna ask for a member of the committee to call this item to question. This is LeVere, I called a question. Thank you, LeVere. All right, let's go to roll call vote. LeVere Foster? Yes. Thank you. Oops, sorry, my computer is freezing up. Okay. Dorothy Hawaii? Yes. Robin, sorry? Yes. Gabriel Antolovich? Yes. Chat before guess. Yes. Kiana Simmons. Yes. Darcy Green. Come in. Darcy Ihomo Masconini. Yes. Pastor Sammy Evans. I did it. Yes. Sandra Asher. Yes. Tamara Hall. Yes. Pancho Guevara. Rosie Chavez. Yes. Lori Valdez. Yes. Uh, Darcy, are you there? Darcy has left the meeting. Oh, okay. Well, um, with 13 yes, this motion passes. All right. Moving right along. We're halfway through, folks. All right, here we go. Um, police conduct recommendations, action item eight. So um, I'm gonna read through these once again, ACC seven. City of San Jose will change its policies following critical incidents involving the treatment of family members and public information on those involved in such incidents. Families will not be interrogated in the first 24 hours after an incident. No public or private discussions will be held with press or community about those involved, such as sharing mugshots, previous history of involvement in the criminal justice system, or edited footage seeking to shape the public narrative. 
the city will release unedited body cam footage to the public without captions. These are from, I'm, I'm sorry, that was ACC7. Um, also from ACC7, the city of San Jose will release the disciplinary records of all officers involved in critical incidents. So items 30 through 33 are parts of ACC5. The city of San Jose will change this policy to place police officers on leave without pay after a first critical incident um, triggering an investigation. The city of San Jose will change its policy to immediately remove officers who have committed multiple critical incidents. The city of San Jose will change its policy to initiate mandatory drug testing of officers involved in critical use of force cases. And the city of San Jose will change its policy to require officers to carry their own personal excessive force insurance. So item 34, ACC9, the city of San Jose will change its policy to require all SJPD officers to provide their name, badge number, and card with instructions for filing a complaint to the civilian oversight structure before conducting a search. Body-worn camera usage. So I will apologize in advance to Ihoma. You had a very well thought out um, body-worn camera usage, which actually has um, roughly 25 sub recommendations. And this is a summary again of those recommendations that are in there. So please bear with me, it's a couple pages of these. So um, these are all part of ACC 14. The city of San Jose will adopt new policies on the proper use of body worn cameras to ensure that, they're full, that they are fully capturing the actions of all parties for the duration of calls for service and investigative stops. Policies will limit the, the recording of crime victims or witnesses without consent and while on the grounds of, and also limit them while on the grounds of elementary and secondary schools. Footage shall be retained for at least six months after date, after date it was recorded and should be accessible to those who were subject of the footage, the parent or legal guardian of a subject, if they are a minor, family of a deceased subject or law enforcement officer, their superior officer or the designated counsel um, of any of the above. Footage shall be retained for at least five years if it captures an interaction of a critical incident, an interaction where a complaint has been filed or at the request of a subject, guardian of a minor subject or the next of kin of deceased subject or any other legal representatives. Whenever doing so is necessary to protect personal privacy, the right to a fair trial, the identity of a confidential um, so, uh, source or crime victim or the life or physical safety of any person appearing in video footage, Redaction technology may be used to obscure the face or other personal identifying characteristics of that person. An unedited original version of the video shall be retained. Body camera footage may not be withheld of a law enforcement officer under investigation for their, for their conduct in their official capacity. And no footage may, may employ facial recognition technology. Gender-based violence response. The city of San Jose will adopt a new trauma-informed uh, will, will adopt new trauma-informed practices and training in response to incidents of gender-based violence to ensure accurate documentation of incidents, follow through on violations of restraining orders, preventing the arrest of survivors, and revisiting mandatory arrest policies. Social media policy. The city of San Jose will adopt a zero tolerance policy of white supremacy and extremism, advocating for such content, whether in department public forums or, or reported personal capacity are grounds for dismissal. I'd like to entertain a motion for consideration of the police conduct recommendations um, just presented. I move that we recommend that we accept these recommendations as presented. This is Sandra. I second. Committee um, discussion on the motion on the floor. Lori. I have a question with the body camera footage being held for five years. Um, I think it has to be held for longer. Had um, this been in effect? I wouldn't have ever been able to see the video footage of Antonio's um, case. 
it wasn't till five years late because they put the case on a gag order and it was five years after when we got SB 1421 to take effect in 2019 that I was actually able to see only one out of the three body camera footages that still haven't released their two. So like all the videos still have time frame has to be long because they put gag or they stuff like they did in our case that's going to be proof that's going to be evidence that's going to be erased and nobody's ever going to get to know the truth of what happened Lori, do you have a recommendation for what the length of time should be for that i i, I if i'm if i if i read the proposal correctly and a homo please correct me this comes from the george floyd um uh like police reform act that was um, that passed through the house last year, I believe, or two years ago. Yeah, and well, well George Floyd's that... case. Yeah, Lord, George Floyd's case got everything um, released right away. My our case didn't. So there are cases that are before George Floyd's case that were put on gag orders that were not released. So we can't just rely on George Floyd's case because that was like a case where it was in the middle of a pandemic and everybody had to pay attention because there was nothing else to do so but this has been happening and there's prior cases where body worn camera camera footage has been withheld from families for years and years and years mm -hmm. and so in this instance with george floyd it was on national news so yeah of course he got all this stuff released right away but i didn't so it has to be held longer how? no matter what or do you have a recommendation for how long well, it's going on nine years for me, and I still haven't got two of the videos, so at least 10 years, I don't know, like, you know, it's going to go, yeah, nine years in next February, and there's still two videos that they have not released to me, so. All right. So, Chad, and then Kiana. I mean, a thought came to my mind, like, could we say forever if someone died? Thank I was you. going to ask, um, how long do they keep them now? I don't know. Hilma, do you have do you have information, more information about that? I can't um sorry, I can't remember the exact um time, but um I'm I'm uh agreeable to the amendment instead of saying five years, ten years, but I want to just clarify that these are two different cases. We already passed a recommendation that says the city will comply with SB 1421, which is, and we sort of put language to immediately release those records. This is sort of general body worn camera usage. And some of this policy is to ensure that training is being followed. And also um, because if you retain footage that isn't necessarily requested or used for a very long period of time, you run into some data storage problems. So that was why my original recommendation said five years, um, because then you also have to figure out how do you store this data safely for that period of time without it being lost or corrupted. But I agree, it's a completely different case if it's um, footage that's already subject to 1421 and has already been requested. Thank you for the clarification. Lori? Yeah, well, the footage, um, SB 1421 gets stuff released, but there's also AB 748, which also is supposed to get um, videos released within 45 days. Well, it's been eight years for me, and they're still not complying. So if the officers, if there's laws being implemented for the officers or the police departments to um, comply, and they're not complying, then... Um, you know, that's like a catch 22 because there's two laws, 1421 and AB 748, and neither one has gotten me all the footage that I'm supposed to get, that I'm entitled to get with what happened, you know, to Antonio. So um, I just want to make sure everybody understands that there are two laws that were passed in 2019 that I helped advocate specifically for because of our case being put on a gag order from the get go that I wasn't able to access anything, records, videos, nothing, until after it was implemented into law. And still to this day, even if there, it was in, implemented in 2019, I still only have one video and I don't even have all the 
documentation that I'm entitled to get because they're playing games with me. Lori, would you, are you um, okay with the change to the footage maintained for 10 years? Um, yeah, for 10 years, but like, I don't, I, it's kind of hard to say because 10 years and then, you know, like say something comes up, new evidence comes up and they erase that footage, then that doesn't, it's, it's hard. It's, it's really hard to decide, like, maybe it should go by, I don't know. I don't even know, you know, it's like at this point, I don't even know. 10 years seems like a lot maybe to everybody, but it's not for me. It's going on nine years and I still don't have everything. So I don't know what kind of a time frame actually would help get all the footages when they refuse to even abide by the laws. So. Would the maker of the motion be amenable to the change recommended? Was that you, Tarab? Yes. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm open to the friendly amendment. Okay. All right, further discussion from members of the committee? I now open it up to members of the public. Any member of the public that would like to address the proposals on the floor? I see Derek Sandlin has his hand raised. Go ahead, Derek. Derek, you have the floor. Hey there. Um, so I am recognizing that, uh, like, a lot of police departments in our area and in general, like, entities have to hold on to records for, like, at least 10 years, um, something like that. But uh, it might be shorter for the for body-worn camera footage. And I was thinking maybe you could just add because afterwards they release that the records to uh, to the city clerk's office and they hold all of the information afterwards. Um, you could possibly just add some language in here that says like after after the set amount of time um, that the city clerk's office will hold the body worn camera footage because I don't know if they hold that. Uh, that's that's not I don't know. I don't know about that. But that's just a thought. Thank you, Derek. I don't want to kick it back to you, Ahoma. Do you have any thoughts? I am I am um yeah, I've been trying to think what what is the time frame, but so I'm I would agree with that. We can add to the language um Um, after which the footage of maybe we can maybe I want to ask Lori if we can sort of say specifically resulting in the death that that be um, held in perpetuity with the city. Can we also add or great bodily injury? I, I'm gonna. Um, could we let let the because um, in the in the report, I think we're gonna define some of these this language around critical incident. Could we let that stand because it does mention that? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Tarab, maker of the motion, would you accept the this as a friendly amendment? I do. Any further conversation? From I do. I have another one. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> um, and the body camera put it, and the body cameras. Um, there should be something that says that officers cannot view the body camera footage before they make their statement of what happened and they can't go back and read and amend their statement once it's been said because the pro the procedure now is they allow the officers to see the video so they can 
um, you know, get their narrative down of what they're going to say, and that should not be the case. If they just commit, did something, they should remember right then and there what they did, and this way it'll see how honest the officers are if their statement is reflecting what's actually on the footage. So I'm not entirely certain how to be able to incorporate that in, in terms of the body of this. So um, I don't know, Yohoma, do you have any, any thoughts about how we might want to be able to change or adjust this? Let me see. I also see that uh, Jim has his hand raised. Jim, <clears throat> go ahead, Jim. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, do we know right now that uh, this is actually policy because it would be a policy change, right? So is this written down in policy that the officer basically has the right to view the cam the video footage before making the statement or? If it's not written down anywhere, I think that it's going to be fairly easy to get that passed. But if it's written down, then it's going to be a policy change. This is um this is Ihoma again. Um, it does not specify about <laughs> viewing it before making a statement. Mm, okay. So is this language acceptable to you, Lori? Yes, and just add maybe and and may not be amended after mm -hmm. their statements have been made. You know, like once they see the video and then, oh, well, we they try to act like, oh, well, I forgot this because they saw something in the video to try to collaborate, you know, like. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. That, that's good. All right. Make for the motion, Tarak, would you accept this as a friendly amendment? I do. All right. Thank you. Any further discussion, members of the public or Jim? No, I just lowered my hand. There's no Okay. Discussion. Okay. Sorry. Ihoma? Yeah, so um, I was just re-looking at my notes on this uh, again. The the current duty manual states that whenever the body worn camera is re footage is reviewed, it has to be documented in some way who has reviewed it. And um, for off officer related incidents and for accuracy and brevity, it does allow um, officers to view it, but it doesn't necessarily specify whether the person viewing it is the officer in question or like a supervisor. So that might this might um, represent some change of language, but I'm fine with adding that as a, a standalone statement. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, I'm gonna ask to for the for a member of the committee to call this item to question. Anyone? This is I the call, I call it a question. All right. I check. Okay. Roll call. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lover Foster. Yes. Dorothy Wang. Yes. Tarab, I'm sorry. We'll come back to Tarab. Gabriel Tolovich. We'll come back to Gabriel. Was that Gabriel? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Chad Bohorikas. Yes. 
uh, Kiana Simmons. Yes. Thank you. Ihoma Bass Ironini. Yes. Pastor Sammy Evans. Yes. Sandra Asher. Yes. Tamara Hall. Yes. Pancho Guevara. Aye. Rosie Chavez. Yes. Lori Valdez. Yep. Jim Carter. Yeah. Just join us, by the way. Yeah. Uh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 12 yeses uh, pa motion passes and uh, to Rob um, oh yeah to Rob yes sorry I think my, my mic was messed up okay 13 thank you all right we are almost at 8 o'clock and I wanted to ask if we could move through one more um, section of this which is the hiring personal training recommendations I want to get a, a sense from the committee if if we could just push through that, then we are very close to being completed with this exercise. We need a motion, Poncho. No, we, no. we are. You know, we we set a time frame for the meeting, but but it's been our practice to try to end at eight. But but we're very close to being able to complete this. So I'm happy to stay. All right. All right. I want to be respectful of people's time. If anyone else feels like they need to leave right now. Please let me know, but I think we'll keep moving. All right, there we go. Um, item nine, action items, hiring personal training recommendations. So um, we have several proposals here. Um, first is um, item uh, 38, ACC3. The city of San Jose will implement a study of SJPD to address discriminatory behavior in, in the department and make recommendations on potential reorganization and accountability. Training, um, we have the city of San Jose will adopt enhanced training to, um, uh, to law enforcement provided by members of the community from underserved communities, those impacted by violence, disability rights organizations, and youth. Item 40, ACC 11, the city of San Jose will evaluate and revamp CIT training for law enforcement to ensure officers can recognize and practice responses to individuals with multiple overlapping disabilities. Working with local and national organizations, CIT training will be required every two years. CIT will also include trauma-informed training on domestic violence response. Um, ACC 13, the city of San Jose will enhance training officer qualifications to ensure they have no resident complaints against them and they are screened for conscious and unconscious bias. Officers must receive training on adult learning theory, history of marginalized communities in San Jose and ableism. Training officers will be evaluated on the performance of officers they have trained. Hiring um, 42, the city of San Jose will require SJPD to develop and publicly report a strategy and timeline for their diversity, equity, and inclusion goals in hiring and retention of police officers and leadership to the extent allowable by law. The city of San ACC 22, the city of San Jose will concentrate recruitment efforts for police um, officer hiring in San Jose neighborhoods to better represent the diversity of the city. Also under hiring, um, ACC 23, the city of San Jose will prioritize the hiring of more police officer candidates from San Jose through preference points instead of, of pay upon hiring and potentially additional monetary compensation for housing. Candidates should have a letter of support from a community group or organization. Um, ACC 20, the city of San Jose will involve qualified residents of San Jose in, in the uh, police officer hiring process to assist with the interviewing and evaluating um, and it, to assist with interviewing and evaluating potential candidates to select those who exhibit the character and qualities of uh, um, the residents want in a police officer. And the last two under community engagement, um, ACC 19, the city of San Jose will require every SJPD officer complete at least 60 hours of community service per fiscal year. The community service, uh, community service qualifies as an officer in, place clothes, in plain clothes participating in events within San Jose on programs created by approved community-based organizations. And ACC 21, the city of San Jose will prioritize community engagement on the part of police officers by establishing more engagement expectations requiring completion of 60 hours of community engagement per year, providing community sensitivity training developed in concert with community members and ensuring police officers serve a minimum of two years for assignment to a patrol district. So um, I'd like to entertain a motion for consideration of the hiring personnel and training recommendations. This is Sandra. I move we accept 
uh, this slate of recommendations. There a second. I second. Thank you, Kiana. All right, we're on discussion of the item. Ihoma. For um, items 46 and 47, I know that Jim and Laver, I think, worked on combining those. And it, I, I mean, maybe they can speak to it, but it seems that 47 would suffice as opposed to both of them. But I don't know if, if there's something that 46 is particularly saying that 47 isn't. Laver. Yes, to Yoma's point, we did combine the recommendations today. I guess I don't think it got to you in time, Poncho, for the presentation. Okay. Is that represented in the spreadsheet? I sent it to Yoma. I just don't know if it was then uploaded since then. Okay. So, um, so can the maker of the motion room so basically 47 seems to be inclusive of that and so can we remove item 46 from that can the maker of the motion accept that as a friendly amendment yes i'm fine with that okay thank you um i just to ask uh jim and and Lever, are there any other substantive changes from this summary description of what we have it sounds like they're the same but um any, anything else that we'd, we would want to include or exclude from this? Jim? Uh, yeah, these are, yeah, 46 and 47. 47 is redundant from 46. So I acknowledge that. And Lavere did work on uh, the language to incorporate both so that it's not so uh, repetitive. Great. So, Thank you. Yes. All right. Any other conversation with members of the committee on the items under um, under uh, personnel training recommendations, training and hiring recommendations? Okay. Yeah. Jim? Uh, yes, can we go back to uh, ACC 14? There's, uh, there was a, let's see. Hmm. I thought it was 14. Um, uh, the CIA chain will be required every two, yes, there it is. Uh, actually, it's ACC 11. Yeah. Uh, working with local organizations, CIT, CIT refresher training will be required every two years rather than CIT training will be required every two years. Okay, thank you. That would just read a little bit better if it was stated that way. Thank you for that catch, Jim. Um, Sandra, would you accept that as a friendly amendment? Yes. Thank you. All right, any other conversation among the committee members for these? Sandra. Yeah, for um, that same one, uh, number 40, ACC 11, um, I believe that, and I didn't, sorry, I didn't look at it, but I believe that in addition to the trauma-informed training on domestic violence response, it would also include um, not only domestic violence, but caregiver violence or caregiver abuse as well. So on domestic violence and caregiver abuse. And was that, did you make the motion? I did. Okay. So, <laughs> so I accept my amendment. <laughs> All right, great, thanks. Lori? Yeah, I just want to say with the trauma informed training on domestic violence care, but also um, to include the aftermath of police violence on the community too. They need to understand the aftermath after an officer involved shooting on the community members who are left with their lives totally in shambles, you know, like the families. I think, uh, I think Lori, um, the, that is, seems to be the focus of ACC 18. Um, which is, if you look at that one, so these did not get combined. I do not believe um, um, there is one around training that law enforcement provided with members of the community for members of those, those impacted by police violence, disability and youth. And then, so 18 and 11, they're fine. They, they can exist, you know, kind of like separately, but, but does that 
satisfy uh, the existence of ACC 18 and the focus on those impacted by, by, by police violence would be providing the training? Yeah. Thank you. Any further comments or feedback on these proposals? All right, going to members of the public, public comment. And members of the public would like to share their thoughts, reflections on hiring personnel training recommendations. Seeing none, I would like to ask a member of the committee to call this item to question the motion on the floor. I call this item to question. Thank you, Tarab. Um, roll call vote. Senator Foster? Yes. Dorothy Wang? Yes. Tarab Ansari? Yes. Gabriel Antolovich? I'll come back to Gabriel. Chad Bohorkas? Yes. Kiana Simmons? Yes. E. Homa Gomez Aronini? Yes. Pastor Sammy Evans? Yes. Sandra Asher? Yes. Tamara Hall? Yes. Pancho Guevara? Aye. Rosie Chavez? Yes. Lori Valdez? Yes. Jim Carter? Yes. And Gabrielle, are you here? All right. 13 yeses and Wilson patches. All right. Well, we could call it a night or we can, we got four more. Anyone object to 10 more minutes? Let's do it. All Let's right. Get it out of the way. Come on. Go okay, team. Here, here we go. Go team. All right. Pushing through item 10 enforcement priorities recommendations. Um, in fact, all the, the remaining four all have to do with enforcement. Some of them within the jurisdiction of the city of San Jose um, and some of them uh, deal more with other jurisdictions. But we will look at these. Um, item uh, uh, 48, PPP6, or PP6, um, the city of San Jose will end enforcement of laws, citations, and fines that target the homeless and redirect resources to support housing, safe parking locations, supportive services to them. And then item 49, PP13, the city of San Jose will end the school resource officer programs with local schools. The city should invest in restorative justice programming for schools. So um, is there a motion to consider the these recommendations? I move that we consider uh, recommendations 48 and 49 together. Thank you, Tarab. Is there a second? This is all right, Sandra. Second. All right. We are in discussion for these items. Any members of the committee that would like to um, weigh in? Tomorrow. Hi, um, on number 49, I think it was, yeah. So um, in addition to investing in restorative justice programming, I would also like to see if we could add alternatives to school safety um, in the form of uh, unarmed security. Is that in the current proposal? Do you know tomorrow? I know. I think it was drafted by. Uh, it may be uh, in one uh, of the Kiana. I think Hero, Hero Tent. Yeah, was working on that. Is that in there, Kiana? I'd I'd have to look. Is Jesse on the call? Yeah. Jesse, give me one second.
Tamara, do you, does this feel like this language is part of a summary? Does that seem like uh, it's reflective of what you what you? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Would the maker of the motion accept this as a friendly amendment? Yes, I do. Thank you, Tarab. Any further discussion from members of the committee? Jesse, are you there? Reverend Sammy. Um, could you go back to the other slide on, on homelessness? Yes. Um, this is just a, a matter of language. Um, fines that target the homeless. Can we change that to people or yes, the unhoused or people experiencing homelessness? Mm -hmm. um, it's, I know that out here, the language has been around unhoused, um, but I think I would rather a people-centric language if that was amenable to the rest of the committee. Thank you, Sammy. That's a very good, very good catch. I, I accept the friendly amendment. No, they should not. It's just. Thank you. Also, I have Jesse here. Yeah, sorry, I'm here, but um, we didn't write this recommendation. It's not this recommendation. It can you go back to the um, SRO school officer one? I think the, the question, Jesse, was, is, it, uh, it, is this change okay? We currently, I think the proposal does not elaborate on alternative unarmed safety responses for schools, but um, if we put this in here, can we elaborate that on in the, in the body of the, of the proposal? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Jesse. Any other members of the committee that would like to share feedback or thoughts? Seeing none, I'm gonna open up to the public for public comment. Any members of the public would like to add their feedback to the motion on the floor. All right, seeing none, um, I'd like to ask for a member of the committee to call these items to question. I call the question. Thank you, Lever. We'll call the Lever Foster. Yes. Both you winning? Yes. Tarab, I'm sorry. Yes. Gabriel Antolovich. Um, Chad Bohorquez. Yes. Kiana Simmons. Yes. Ihoma Umezer-Gonini? Yes. Pastor Sammy Evans? Yes. Sandra Asher? Yes. Tamara Hall? Yes. Poncho Gavar? Aye. Rosie Chavez? Yes. Lori Valdez? Yes. Jim Carter? Yes. With 13 yeses, the motion passes. All right, last section, folks. Here we go. Recommendations to other bodies. So, um, so you have a couple of proposals here that we're talking about um, specific areas that we would want to look at differential or different forms of enforcement and studies. And so, these two items are items PP fourteen and PP fifteen um, as part of the um, of the the recommendations list. Um, the city of San Jose will identify policies and practices that minimize child separation and investigations of alleged abuse working with the county of Santa Clara. And the proposal for 15, the city of San Jose will, will study the enforcement priorities and expand harm reduction strategies for individuals struggling with addiction in partnership with the, with the county of Santa Clara. Can we have a motion? A motion to accept the recommendations as listed. I second. 
Oma and second Tarab. All right, we are in discussion of these proposals. Sandra. Hi, yeah, for this um, proposal, number 51, um, I'm not sure who the author is, but my question is, um, could we add where it says expand harm reduction strategies? Could we say expand evidence-based harm, re harm reduction strategies? Maker of the motion, accept this as a friendly amendment. Yes, that, that's also hero tent. We accept. And who made the motion? Was it Oma? Yes, I, I accept that um, as a friendly amendment. Great. Thank you. Other committee um, comments, reactions? Say none, I'm gonna open up to members of the public. Any members of the public that would like to weigh in on these proposals? Thank you all. Um, can someone <clears throat> uh, like to ask for someone to call the item to question? The motion on the floor to accept. Because there was no immediate consent, but the firm move to call the item in question. All right, roll call vote. Chris Logan. Liver Foster. Yes. Oops. Oh, I'm sorry, my computer is acting up. Okay, Dorothy White. Yes. To Robin Sarr. Yes. Gabriel Tolovich. Chat Borges. Yes. Kiana Simmons. Yes. E. Homo Yes. S. Seven Evans. Yes. Sandra Asher. Yes. Tamara Hall. Yes. Pancho Guevara. Aye. Rosie Chavez. Yes. Lori Vades. Yes. Jim Carter? Yes. All right, with 13, assist the motion passes. Wow, <laughs> you did it. All right, so with that, we are going to, I'm gonna uh, move to steering committee report, a very quick report. We were hoping that we would be able to take this meeting and next meeting to actually power through these recommendations, but thank you for those who are able to stick out with this conversation. We now have um, direction that these recommendations that we've that we've developed have been accepted by the committee to move forward to the council. The goal is now to work on drafting a final report for uh, for review and dis and, and discussion um, over the you know at, at next week's meeting. And so and we will utilize um, April 20th um, at 6:30 p.m. if we if need be, but the substance of the substantive work that we've done over the last um, seven months um, and um, you know is is really um, as as done done. <laughs> so I want to thank and congratulate everyone for your hard work, your contribution, your participation, um, and um, and the the level of a. Um, focus that we've been able to have to really drill down a very comprehensive set of recommendations um, to be able to move forward to the city council. Um, the, la the last thing I was going to share from the steering committee is that um, we have, uh, if we're able to produce and, and finalize the report, um, we are in conversations right now with the, um, with the city manager's office about potentially bringing this on uh, to a regular city council meeting to present um, our uh, our report and recommendations on the May 10th or May 24th. So depending upon how quickly we're able to do this, I think this gets us on track to be able to finish, you know, finish something up, but that is where we are at right now. 
So anything else from the steering committee that we want to discuss? One, one last point um, to, to remind folks of is that we were able to establish our ad hoc subcommittees um, on, I think it was um, October 15th. October 15th is when they, when they were established and they, that they got started. So um, we will not be able to meet as like, if, if your subcommittee wants to continue to meet and harmonize and making sure that we're reflecting some of the pieces of these proposals, not changing the substance of them, but being able to make sure that we're, we're, we're doing some cleanup language and some other pieces, um, committees will not be able to meet because we're ad hoc committees. Um, um, unless we make them permanent committees after the after April 15th. So we have a week to actually complete some of those elements of work uh, as as committees. Um, uh, or we can, I, and I believe maybe maybe Peter can clarify this, um, we can make them public and um, and and make sure that they're subject to Brownock requirements and public noticing and, and doing those those particular things. So, we have ad hoc committees that basically we had six months to get our work done and we're almost there. So anything that you would add, Peter? Yeah, you got it right. Uh, after the six months that up is up, you can continue to meet. It just has to be, um, has to be publicly noticed. And we can, I mean, we, we publicly noticed the, um, the outreach meetings that the committees did. So it'd be just like that. It's pretty easy. It wouldn't be that big a deal. We just need a little bit of lead time. So hopefully we can get most of this work wrapped up next week. All right. That how is about all. The, how about the Poncho, how about the letter that we wanted to get approval to address the city council? That when we talked about the steering committee. That we can't get it on the agenda. Yeah, that's on the agenda for next week. Correct, Chris. Correct. No. Uh, no, that's not oh. correct. I just, I mean, I, I just got that this afternoon and didn't have time to vet it out before the agenda needed to go out. Mm. Um, so if you, if you meet on the 20th, I can vet it with our attorneys and management for that date. But um, it, I just, it was too late to be able to get it on the agenda for next week. Okay. Well, uh, just, just as a point, there is an opportunity for organizations, not as members representing RIPs, but as organizations being able to sign on to a letter, that's maybe something that we're able to do. And I know it's something that will be under consideration by, um, I think tomorrow at the, um, uh, at the uh, Race Equity Action Leadership Coalition is gonna be talking about doing a joint statement. So we may have some ways of getting around that. All right. Given that, I'm going to move us to open forum. Any um, any member of the community, the public, you, uh, members of the committee would like to speak on something that is not on the agenda. This is open forum. This is an opportunity to be able to share thoughts, ideas, concerns. Seeing none. It is 8.25 p.m. I adjourn the meeting of, the, of our beloved Reimagining Public Safety Community Advisory Committee. Thank you and good night. And good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Thank you, Poncho. Have a good night, everyone.